So it's Halloween again, and this week we're going to start with a little school character. Um, all week we'll be doing witches and uh, pumpkin kings and obviously skeletons. So this one's a nice start because it's in Nomad on the iPad. We're going to sculpt it up um, with primitives. I'll do it with a time lapse because we've covered this quite a few times in the last few weeks. Then we're going to take it over to Mixamo, Adobe's um, little animation and rigging program. And it's a great one for beginners just to start with because you can rig it with a few clicks. And then pop it into cinema to see what he looks like animated. So we're going to make the Scully character um, from primitives. So if you haven't done this kind of thing before or if you want to check out the Nomad uh, character that we did, that pretty much explains all of this process. So we're only going to do a time ramp now um, simply because we've, we've done this quite a few times. So essentially what we're doing is we're putting together a set of primitives. We're lining them up um, exactly as we need to make uh, the representation of a body. So for example, we've done with cylinders and spheres, we've already done the, the arms and the body and the legs. Um, we've used a cube for the hands and the fingers and then for the thumb. And then we've once that's done, basically we merge it all together and use voxel remerge. Uh, or voxel um, merge, and that basically welds it all together. Uh, we've only done half of the body because we're going to use symmetry and mirror across the sim, you know, mirror across the center of the the world. And then we start using the basic sculpt tool. So the main ones that we'll use will be clay, smooth, um, a little bit of flatten every now and again, and um, we'd, we'll use. With the clay tool, we'll use the sub button as well uh, on the right hand side, which gives you the ability to intrude into the model as, as well as to add clay. We're using the move tool a lot to move it around and move the volumes. And of course the trim tool, which will allow us to chop off the bottom of the feet to flatten the feet. We're after a little um, skeleton character. So obviously we, you know, it's quite stylized because he's got fatty hands and fatty legs and feet. So he's not a, a bony, character but once we've got the core of the the design laid down then I will make it a little bit more skeletal so maybe put something like ribs on there so as you can see there I'm at the point very very quickly we're at the point where we can just make the head and the, the, the kind of skull shape so we just push into the eyes uh, pull down the the upper jaw and then give it some character with the smooth and the clay brush and that's enough for this this kind of character is just just to give it a feeling of, of, of emotion from the face so it's the top half of a skull really and then now we make it a little bit more skull like so we're bringing in that you know we're getting rid of some of the volumes of the, the around the abdomen and the legs and it looks a little bit more like a set of hips and and, and a bit more bony I didn't want to go too skeletal because it's, it's got to be quite a nice cute little character and that's quite close to it, really. So we switched the paint on and did just built up the volumes around the eyes there first. And then we'll probably just darken down those eyes, build up the volume on the fingers, a little bit more on the back, and then paint in those black eyes with a little red dot in the middle. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we saved that out and we used that to go into Mixamo. So we've gone to Mixamo.com. Um, and then basically what you have to do is bring Scully in. So you upload a character and then select the file. Now we've put him here and we've got a couple of versions. So we'll just try this one. Now I did two, if you remember, a lower and a higher version. So I would probably spend the time and retopologize this in another program. But I can just show you quickly what it would work like if you just use the, the high poly like this. So the auto rigger kicks in and that, what that basically is, is is Adobe's system for throwing a rig onto any character mesh you put in. So hopefully it'll come in the correct direction. If not, use these buttons on the left here to spin him around so he's facing the front. Hit next and then you've got a number of options to add um, suggested um, place markers. So you won't snap one on the chin, one on the wrists. Uh, one on the elbows, one on the knees, and then try and locate a groin. I always put it in 
um, like a little bit into the groin so it's not sticking down below it. And that's all you need to do. And then just let it calculate. So what it does is it sends that model off to Adobe servers and, and sticks the um, the auto rig, cap, basically puts a rig inside it. Uh, it does all the skinning and weighting for you. Um, so it's, you know, it's a very, very simple, fast, uh, and presuming you've got an Adobe cloud, CC cloud account, then it, it's quite a quick way of, of getting a, a usable rig done. Um, so what we use it for a lot is when we just have secondary characters or characters where we don't want to even um, do anything other than basic movements in the background. So as you can see, it takes a few minutes and then Scully comes out and it just proves that he's working like so. So it just throws some basic animation on. Just say next and then you get this, which is um, uh, just a, a preview of, of the typos. Um, so if you hit this button down at the bottom and say toggle for camera follow, and then you can just put any of these walk cycles on or any of these different character actions. So if we do, um, obviously he's a zombie, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a skeleton, isn't he? Not a zombie, but I, you know, I don't think there's a skeleton. Um, I wonder if there is a built-in skeleton walk. I've never actually looked. Let's have a look if there is anything skeleton. No, I didn't think there would be. So let's try zombie, which is the closest I can think of. Uh, and there you go, there's plenty of l little actions that a zombie might do, so it's a lot of pre-recorded um, action for a zombie. So this is Thriller Part 1. Um, and then you basically just, it applies it to that rig. Um, so can be really really useful if you don't you know if you don't have the the you know time or the skill to invest in um in getting this rigged and animated this is a great way of just getting something done hit that make that camera there will follow your character um so it's going to run through that entire cycle if the arms are colliding then you can do this character arm space you can overdrive to make him faster and you can trim it longer and shorter so there you go it looks a bit weird now <laughs> I quite like it actually He's, the overdrive is making him stuttery and a, a little bit crackers um, let's knock that overdrive down a little bit sorry the arm space down a little bit and the overdrive down a little bit and then what we'll do is I'll show you how to get that you can put that into blender or into into any of the programs that, that you use um, I'm going to use the one that I use a lot um, Cinema 4D, but it really doesn't matter because all we do is we go um, download and would say we want to leave FBX on. Um, you've got Collada uh, and FBX for Unity uh, with skin, keyframe reduction none, and 30 seconds. So, and just download that. So, let's switch to uh, Cinema 4D and have a look what we get in there. Okay, so we'll bring him into Cinema. Um, we just use import FBX. And we basically just, it, it's pretty much okay to leave all of the default settings. Don't be flipping any of the axes or anything like that. And basically what you're after is, is geometry and rig. So let's see what comes in, see what we get. So it's coming quite small there. So let's have a look. There you go. And you can see he's in and he's got a rig. So now if you want to, you can, uh, if you open up um, any of the, uh, the the hierarchy there, you'll see that he's fully rigged. So you can easily just go and start animating with this rig that, that they've given you. It, it's not the best, um, there are issues with it, um, but do you know what? I use it quite a lot, I find it quite useful. Um, it, 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 it's The weighting is probably the problem sometimes, where it, what that means is basically it um, it can, uh, pull and stretch where you, you if you don't know how to do weighting and you've never done this kind of you know you've never done any kind of rigging or anything like that, you probably won't you know you'd probably find that quite difficult but it's uh, for you know if you've already got the Adobe Creative Cloud then this is a great way to, to, to get a little rig out and and obviously if you're just coming straight out of Nomad I mean we haven't done any work on on this whatsoever in terms of the the, the topology so if you retopologize this first and get a really nice uh, geometry underneath it then it'll perform way way better so we'll just throw um, let's just throw a new material on it um, just anything that's that's whiter there we go
um, and then what we can do is we can just run the animation and see so before we do that I'll just do filter um, I'll turn everything off uh, and just turn the polygons back on there we go just so as you can see it a bit clearer and just run the animation and just see what what came in with it and there you go you've got um, you've got an animated skeleton I'm just moving it around now, um, and you'll see in full what, whatever whatever you exported. That that's what you'll get now. You'll you'll see the full um, extent of the of the sequence. Um, I think ours was only short, wasn't it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look how long it is. Um, oh no, it's a bit longer. Yeah, it's a, it was a full sequence, wasn't it? So it's quite cute, really. It's you know you can see this, his toes are flapping incorrectly there, so you might want to go in and correct that. Um, but he's certainly quite cute. Um, doing those motions and you can test this is raw straight from nomad so there's plenty of issues going on but imagine if you learn to you know to get the retopology done and do, and, and retopologize it correctly and um, then you'd get such a such a you know a much better um uh, basically a much better model and a much better end result but there you go that's how you can quickly take your model out of nomad and rig it and animate it, um, well not you animating it, but getting Adobe to animate it for you with uh, Mixamo. Just to prove the point and just show you, so this is the um, Nomad export of Scully. He, uh, this clearly shows how bad the geometry is. It's really, really high res, so it's not a lot of use. So this is probably for people with a little bit more experience, um, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is. So under, uh, if you come over to your sub tool and you duplicate your model, hide the top one. Now this lower one here, what we want to do is make a low, uh, basically remesh it. So I've pulled remesher out on the interface here, so I'll make it a 2000, poly so to basically my target polygon count will be 2k and I hit Z remesh and what it'll do is it'll have a go at that so it'll try and uh, Z remesh it for me to around 2000 which doesn't always work but it'll it'll get you somewhere close to it and as you can see it's not done a bad job so it's retopped it with a with a single click now what we want to do is make sure symmetry is on and we're just gonna bash this out into um, a, a set of UVs so I'm going to select around the areas that I want to polygroup. So that's select and then control and W. So to do the selection, if you just hold down control and click up to this button on the top left, you can pick mask lasso, which is what I'm doing here. And then I just want to group out certain parts of the body. That didn't work very well. Make sure that we get all of that leg. That's fine. I want to take off the bottom of the feet. I'm not being massively accurate as you can tell. Control shift click anywhere you want and you can isolate bits of it like that. Uh, with the body we'll take the head off like so. Control W and then with the body we'll just split it back and front. I really love ZBrush for UV and fast like this. Uh, when, when you don't really care about the UVs it's just get, getting something UV'd and layouts, laid out. That's how I like to do it. So that's quickly given me some polygroups. So if you go to Z plugin, UV master, um, use polygroup symmetry unwrap, that's unwrapped it for you. And then over on the tool panel, you'll find UV map and you can say, we can have a look at it first of all. So morph UV gives you your UVs. That, that basically shows you that it has worked. Um, if you turn bump off, it'll be completely flat like that. But it show, just shows it makes very, very fast, useful UVs. What we need to do is capture the poly painting onto that texture. So we go to our other model and we do Control D a couple of times on the on the make sure you're on this model. So this is our new member, our UUV map one. Control D, uh, give it about a million polys if you want, just enough to capture the the texture. Switch the other one on, and then you just want to go on to project, and then project all. So yes, and what that does is it projects the top one onto the bottom one. So this is the top one and this is the bottom one. I'll prove it to you by just moving it actually. So this is our old one, looks exactly the same. And this is our new one, 
on the right. So this one has got the old topology from Nomad. This one has got our new topology, but it's super high res. So what we need to do is then say from, well, basically now this one can be deleted. We don't want it. Say always gone. And this one, what we want to do is capture that poly painting onto that texture map. So how do you do that? Texture map new from poly painting. And there you go. You get your texture map popped on there. So go down the resolution. So this is a low poly model now. And then we need to capture all of them to send them to Mixamo. So I'm going to export the OBJ. So Scully for low. I want to capture the texture. So if I clone it, there are plugins to do this, but with, for speed and just getting it done today, there's the there's the texture. On in ZBrush, one thing you must know is you must flip it on V before you export it. And I'll put it in the same folder because um, because of time. <laughs> Okay, here's our guy now. Let's bring him in. Do him as a group, actually. Throw the texture on him. Overall. And if I remember rightly, the texture needed a texture map. So we'll just throw that into the um, diffuse channel. We're not doing anything complex here. We're just showing the process. Um, go to downloads. Um, scully for low and there you go if it looks a bit rough there with the editor just go um, uh, default knock that up to 2k and that's basically it uh, you can subdivide it if you want um, let's just run it and there we go here he comes and he's doing his dance look at that so that's a great way of um, let me just turn off all of the other, I won't turn everything off because I like it on the black background. So we'll turn off um, guides. Oh, it looked at me funny then. <laughs> Let's turn off, in fact, turn it. polygons on. Let's put the gradient on. Um, and that'll do it. That's enough. That's all we need, really. We're not going to render it. We're not looking at anything beyond the fact that we've done it with a texture map this time. In texture map this time, you can see he's having fun now. That's a great way to use and, and mess around with your Nomad um, sculpts. Really, you can, if you, you know, presuming you you have an Adobe account, it's a great way of getting stuff uh, in and just having a play with it. Um, and obviously, as you can see, you know, f with very few minutes worth of work, you can you can have you know a good bit of fun with this stuff. So he's uh, he's going to be dancing his way through the afternoon. So let's dive into Halloween week then. So Scully's done, and next we can look at doing a witch in Adobe Medium, which will release every day next week, Monday through Friday. Wednesday we'll do a Pumpkin King and Gravity Sketch, and we'll end the week on something exciting in Forger or Nomad. So I hope you're enjoying the channel. Uh, if you're enjoying the channel and you do like the stuff that we're doing, then please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll let you know when we drop the new videos on a Wednesday and a Friday. And have a spooky Halloween week.